Hey kids, welcome to the fort, where each week we get to read stories together. I have a question. Have you ever been afraid of the dark? That time when your dad or mom or grandma or grandpa tuck you in at night and the lights get turned off and you're supposed to have a great night's sleep, but the shadows look a little weird? Darkness is something that humans weren't really designed for. And in today's story, we're going to read a pretend story, but one with a really good point that talks about darkness and light. Today's story is called The Lightlings by R.C. Sproul, illustrated by Justin Girard. It's got some really great pictures in it. Let's read. Once upon a time, there was a great king who was the king of light. He lived in the light. He made the light. And his light was so perfect and so pure, he was called the king without a shadow. This great king of light made a group of people. He made them so they could shine brightly just as he did. He called them his little lightlings. He set the lightlings in a beautiful garden that he prepared for them, a garden that was full of bright sunshine. The sun bathed the garden every day and helped the flowers, plants, and fruit grow in great abundance. The bright light of the sun helped keep everyone warm in the garden. The lightlings loved it when the king came to visit them at the end of the day. But one day something terrible happened. The lightlings decided to do what they wanted to do instead of what their king commanded them to do. So they disobeyed the king and sinned against him. The very moment they sinned, their light became dim and they were filled with shame and great embarrassment. They ran as fast as they could to get away from the king. They didn't want the king of light to see them. They ran out of the garden and into the woods, and they hid themselves in the darkest place they could find. From then on, they were afraid of the light, because they knew that where the light was, the king would be, and the king would see them in their shame. After the lightlings left, the king began to remove his light from the garden. It soon became cold and covered with weeds, thorns, and sticky briars. The lightlings moved further and further into the woods, until they lived in a place that was almost completely covered in darkness. It was so dark, they had to grope around as if they were blind, feeling their way through the forest. Often they would trip and fall, scuffing their knees and bruising themselves. It was awful, living in that dreadful darkness all the time, where the only light they ever saw was in barely lit shadows that danced in the forest. In fact, they couldn't tell the difference anymore between night and day. Then, one night, or perhaps it was day, far off in the distance, they saw a blinding light shining through the trees they could see the light coming from miles and miles away. They were frightened by it. They thought the light might be the king who was coming to find them and punish them for their sins. So most of the lightlings began to stumble quickly away from the light. But some of the lightling children were so amazed by the light and curious that they decided to see from where it was coming. They set off and they traveled for miles and miles. It took them a long time, but as they moved, they saw the light shining brighter and brighter. Finally, they came to a clearing in the forest. In the middle of the clearing, they saw a father lightling, a mother lightling, and a baby who was shining like the sun. The blazing light seemed to be coming right out of the baby himself. The lightlings who saw it were shocked and surprised. They asked the father lightling, Who is this baby? Where did he come from? The father lightling answered, He is not my son. He is the son of the king of light. The king has given it him to us as a special gift. He's been born for us 
and when he grows up, he will be called the light of the world. There will be no darkness strong enough to hide his light, no darkness deep enough to send his light away. When they heard this, the lightning children knelt down at the baby's feet and began to worship him in fear and reverence. When they stood up again, their own faces were shining. But the light that was shining in their faces was not coming from inside them. It was a reflection of the light coming out of the baby. The lightlings were now surrounded by the light of the child that they had visited. They rushed back to their homes, their friends, and their families as fast as their little feet would carry them. When they got home, they were still shining. The other lightnings were frightened at the sight of them. They asked, what happened to you? So the lightnings children told their story. We saw a baby who was shining with light. He's the son of the king of light. The king has given us a child. He has given us his own son to be the light of the world. The lightlings noticed that already there was more light in the forest. Now they could begin to see where they were going. They could walk without falling. They could run and play without bumping into the trees or rocks or getting bruised. Some still hid from the light, but others realized they didn't need to be afraid anymore. They saw that living in the light was much better than the darkness they were used to. And there's one more good picture on the next page. When we're scared, scared of the dark at night when the lights are turned off, sometimes one of our adults will turn on a nightlight. I wonder if I should get a nightlight for the fort. And then we're not so scared anymore. And that's what happened in today's story. When we saw the light, when the lightlings saw the light, they weren't as afraid anymore. We have a God that loves us and he is the source of all light. And he takes care of us even in the darkness when we can't see. Our God is bigger. He is the source of all that is good, including light. And so when we're afraid at night, we don't need to be afraid because our God will take care of us. Thank you so much for reading today. The Lightlings by R.C. Sproul, illustrated by Justin Gerard. Come back again soon and we'll read more stories here in the fort.